Guru Kripa Kevala. Namaste and welcome everyone to Satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Muji Baba Ki Chai. Okay, let's go to Muni. Muni ji. <laughs> Have a great day. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Um, I just... Um, uh, nothing. I don't know. I just want uh, to see you. Uh, to see. And also, um, it may be coming up that I, if, I, if, if I can, I can go to Bangalore. It's like I'm leaving my job slowly. So if it's possible, I would like to come. Um, oh, very welcome. Very, very welcome, in fact. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Whenever it's possible. And if you need any help, just let us know. I'm very happy um, to hear this news. Yeah, it looks like it's it, it's like maybe next month, like uh, slowly. Um, uh, yeah. I don't have much money though, so but I hope uh, I somehow I can make it. Uh, so don't worry, yeah. just get here. We'll take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. What else? All good. Yeah, very good, very good. I, I very much enjoyed like all the satsangs. I, I cannot join now every like every time. I like even now in half an hour I have to go to work. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I very much enjoyed the recording of the satsang with Kisha share. Like um, like uh, I give you all my chopping swords. Yes. I yes. very much enjoy. I so much enjoyed that one. Yes, I got some uh, feedback on this. A lot of. Uh... A lot of Sangha brothers and sisters enjoyed this one a lot. Is it back up? Okay. Going back up? Is it already or it's going back? Yes, it's back up. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Mm. Yeah, I was in an like, uh, exceptionally choppy mood that day. <laughs> I, I didn't hear this now. I was saying I was in an exceptionally choppy mood that day. It was like... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. So Pretty full on. Uh, mostly for me, it's mostly like it's now like it's not like when you say or like chill, like it's so simple. But it's like like maybe somehow I go on these adventures, not like conceptually, but like trying to somehow see. I don't know. Maybe see something. Um, which is not the right right word, but like maybe seeing that all of this is illusion somehow, I don't know. Uh, but I, so this even like, even this like just chill, uh, it's uh, yeah, I very, like innocence, chill, like, like a child. This is very, very, yeah, very funny, very funny. Don't, don't, don't take anything so seriously because even like, even now I feel like I'm not suffering at all, but still like, um, yeah, just easy, like some, some yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. Thank you. It is the idea of grasping that gets us in trouble. What already is, is missed in our notion of getting. And then what happens is the mind can play this game where it can feel like I'm getting something, I'm making progress, I'm growing all of that, you see. But what was the starting point? You, see? you say, I want to find God or I want to find myself. What is the way to get there? Must we start with the presumption that God is not here already or the self is not even apparent already and that is why we need to find 
May I, I want to find a shirt. But you're wearing a shirt. Any shirt. I just want to find it. <laughs> you already have it. No? So isn't it first logical to see what you have and then embark on a search? And where can God not be? What kind of God would it be? Or what kind of self would it be if it was not here now and it would come sometime into the future? You see? And at the same time, we all know Vedantically that anything that comes goes. So waiting for an experience of God or an experience of the self to come itself is the greatest fallacy of the spiritual seeker. Because whatever you will experience as an objective phenomenon will go no matter how high it seems it cannot stay so what does it take to find God right now to find yourself right now what does it take now you will say I have searched I have been seeking, I have had a few experiences and those experiences came and the experiences went. But I am still searching. Many of you may say that. Now, with what tool, with what mechanism can you search? For that which always is. How to search for that which always is? All perceptions come and go, so not always is. Agreed? Even if it's first time in satsang, no? very simple things I'm saying. Everything that you perceive, it comes and goes. Yes? Nothing stays forever except the selves, except God. So, with everything that we can perceive, that cannot be it. Now, is there something beyond this? Is there something beyond this? Because if there is not, then all there is is a play of perceptions. And if you have to discover it, it will come. Then it will be another perception. Because perceptions will come and go, not the truth. So this is the conundrum of the spiritual seeker. How to find the truth? Now I will introduce the truth to all of you and tell me if you found it or not. Okay? Just right now. Just right now. Are you just an object of your perceptions? Just see for yourself. Are you just a perception? Let's put it that way. The realm of perceptions is visible. Yes? Are you just that? That which is visible? What is your inside? How will you look? Will you meditate and find out? That will be another objective experience. If the truth is here, if God is here, then why not right now, without any step needed? So all perceptions are coming and going, all the sages have told us. Yes? All, everything that you perceive is coming and going. Is that all there is to you? Just a lump of perceptions. What can you confirm right now? What can you confirm? What else is there besides perceptions? Hmm? There's an awareness of it. Awareness of perceiving. Is that apparent or no? Apparent or no? You see? Who's unaware? of their perceptions. Anybody unaware? Cannot be. 
cannot be. So this awareness, how is it distinct or different from you? At what distance? And how much time away from you is it? So then what is the problem? The problem is that there's a narrative and the mind is nothing but a presumed object which is the speaker of this narrative. When the narrative appears, then that seems to be more attractive than the truth, at least for the time being. And, or even not more attractive, but more habitual, more of an addiction to go into that story. Even now, when I say, find yourself in this way, you may say, oh, am I getting realized? Am I finding the truth? Is this it? Am I finally getting it? So as long as you keep carrying this monkey on your back of this me, 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 you see, then it may seem like that gets blurred. The truth seems unattainable. But just empty of that. Just empty of that. Which is God's gift to God right now. You see? Nobody can start closed. Everybody starts open right now. Right now yourself is apparent to you. See? No matter how hard you try, in this moment, you cannot be bound. Right now. Then, when you go to the towards the hypnosis of the mind, which may be attracting your attention and your belief, then we fall into that narrative, then it can seem like I'm just a bundle of flesh and blood. I'm just a little person who is going from place to place, who was born, who will die. All this nonsense comes from there. Without that, what is your story? You see, why do you need a phone call from the head to tell you about yourself? You can see by now that it's a wrong number. Can we not see? Maybe saying even now, hello, I'm still here. Don't listen to this guy. You see, this guy is dangerous. He's going to mess up your life. You see, because you will be lost. None of that is going to happen. This is just fear tactics. Even Guruji had this fear that he'll become a hunchback beggar like Cosimodo on the streets of Brixton. It doesn't happen like that. So without the mind, who are you right now? Who are you without the story? Don't you exist anymore? Don't you exist anymore? <laughs> exist or no? You exist without a story. Isn't it? Now, what is the benefit of going to the story? What is the benefit? Just some feeling of being right. Just some mind-made righteousness. The need to know, the need to be right about something. That's all. And I'm telling you that if you stop trying to be right, you would be free right now. Stop trying to be right about anything. That is freedom.
stop trying to be right even about being wrong just leave that whole playground see i don't want you coming out of this at some saying i'm so wrong i'm just so happy to be wrong i just want to be wrong you see then you're trying to be right about being wrong that's another assertion another position so leave all of that in fact it has left don't go back looking for it it is left it has left you see the false has left you maya has left you ego has left you you are here here not in time not in space you just are die is in itself this is already the case this is the only fact if there is some something called fact this is the only fact everything else is made up made up so you want some made up resolutions to made up things or you want to meet yourself as the highest what is going to happen you resolve everything then you die i think gets resolved then you die death is the resolution anyway unavoidable everyone that you have a problem with is going to die everything that uh, you don't have a problem with is going to die you that you take yourself to be is going to die resolve you see so die before death let that one die before death in fact it is the death you give it the kiss of life again i think yes yes ha uh, what ah uh, okay yeah yeah that one you see the same wrong number just put it down you see it's a wrong number pretending to be you what is the mind telling calls you and tells you a story about you and you don't say who is this it says it is you calling why do you need a voice to hear about yourself are you not here you here so this uh, stuff we can stop it is pointless it has gone on long enough i don't feel like it is worth any more of your time you see you want the truth here it is undeniably unless you go to your mind for a certificate who is here god is here you are aware of even the presence of consciousness cannot be taken away from you you are that in which consciousness takes birth see consciousness is apparent to you what must you be the universe is a tiny appearance within consciousness and you are beyond both this is clear to you right now you are not confused about it except in the head it is clear to everybody
unless you go back to your fairy tales which are in time in space nothing is going to happen there nothing is going to happen there. allow it to move as it is moving it is all fine this movie is well made it is playing out well everything is fine allow it to move but are you just a character in the movie are you just a character in this dream or are you that which is aware of the dreamer so right now this discovery is possible for everyone this is universally true you could have stumbled into the wrong zoom call it doesn't matter you could have come to a business meeting and you will you may hear this and if you are open you can see that this is true it doesn't matter what you have done before this how many books you've read scriptures you've read how many satsangs you've been to it doesn't matter this is universally true the truth is universally true it is the one truth you are the one truth what you take yourself to be even right now on hearing this you may say am i the body mind getting this truth gone finish forget about it never going to happen so leave that see for yourself see beyond sight you are aware of sight but you are not sight and most importantly stop trying to squeeze all this into your heads it's not going to fit not going to fit over there don't try to make an understanding out of it you will just be feeling your spiritual ego are you right now are you do you exist you are that which is aware of this is who who is that some guy sitting in the sky <laughs> who is it it's you isn't it see and this you that is aware is your reality unchanging even the god of this universe takes birth within you even consciousness takes birth within you that is your magnificence that is your reality you are brahman itself the qualities and the qualityless are both just your aspects and this truth is hidden in plain sight hidden in plain sight in fact you can't leave it it's just apparent to you now if you are searching you see if you are looking for something you are looking for the wrong thing the greatest gift is already with you what can you search for now what is not found according to whom your progress in time is according to whom
the need for a satisfactory conclusion belongs to whom are you aware right now are you aware and this you and aware is distinct are different is aware something that belongs to you or are you it what do you have to fear do you have to fear can't hedge your bets now the time for that is done you are here now you see you can't keep one foot in personhood oh that is my practical life you see and one foot in satsang saying this is my spiritual life you're taking off now taking off if you try to keep one foot on the ground it's going to be too painful you don't owe personhood anything you don't owe it a happy ending this drop the story midway right now you don't have to wait for an explosive experience and then it is all over right now the wall interest in the faults a deal we made uh, well we were not in the broadcast we were just meeting here a deal we made was that we will not suffer on behalf of an entity we cannot find we will not suffer on behalf of someone that we can't find so this is a powerful deal and it's very rational as well although i'm i'm not usually rational but this deal is quite rational as well it will appeal to your rationality why suffer on behalf of someone that you can't find then one child says what if that one is real what if that one is real then when you find that one then you can suffer on his behalf till then is it because you trust and you love me and i am saying there is no such one is it don't suffer if i am proven wrong then tell me here is the one that i am suffering on behalf of this one and ananta you were wrong let's let's both suffer i am happy to make that deal but you are just suffering from fictional things that have nothing to do with your reality because they seem meaningful to your story that's all you don't want to have a blank page on your story either bad or good something must happen If nothing is happening 
Hamburg. So stop it now. You can stop it. You as consciousness have full power to stop it. You as the person doesn't exist. So you cannot fix it personally. You cannot complete your narrative because the one who has the narrative doesn't exist. You, you, that one with the position, that has to go. You go. Nobody needs you. Just go. Huh? Huh? Get up. Gopala is prompting me to say get So, whatever representation you have, that can get lost. Nobody cares. It has no value, especially to you. All this falls gibberish. Be done with it. I say, but 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 none of that. But it's true, it's not. I'm really feeling this. Are you? A feeling arises and subsides. What is your relationship with it? The world arises and subsides. What is your relationship with it? Thoughts arise and subside. What is your relationship with it? The power to identify is to make these false relationships. But you have come for the truth to satsang, the company of the truth, satsang. How much falseness should we nurture in satsang? Satsang has to be 51% sat and 49% jhut, is it? Jhut is life. As long as the proportion is high, we are okay. Is it like that? Or can we be relentless now at this point? to chop away all that is false. Can the false serve the truth? That we must nurture it. Which one of your stories are you not done with yet? If you're not done with it, you haven't suffered from it yet enough. Or maybe you have suffered a lot from it, but you've invested so much into it that you feel like you want to succeed, you want to win and get out of it. You don't want to leave it like this. 
there is no need to hold on to the faults. You say, I want the truth. The truth is being made apparent. So you have no excuse now. The truth is being made apparent. Your mind will keep saying, but, but, no, no, it's not clear, all that nonsense. But even you can smell the lie now. You can smell it. It's not true. The truth is apparent to you. Every time you check, it is clear to you. And all of you are pretty open and empty now. Whether you believe it about yourself or not. But don't fall for this mental temptation. You realize that temptation, falling for temptation is just falling for slavery. Mental oppression. If slavery is too strong over it, you can call it oppression. It tempts you with a story. And then the story oppresses you. At least it seems to oppress the protagonist of the story. You in reality are never oppressed. Where is the me right now? The one you are going to present in two minutes from now. Where is that right now? Where is that right now? Where is the me whose story you are going to share? Or you are going to believe? Where is that? It's just a pure witnessing of your being within which all these perceptions are shining. That's all that's going on. Pure witnessing of your being. Unlimited being. In which just pure perception of these beautiful sensations are being witnessed. That's all. Where's the me? Where is the me? Where is the one with the story? Can anyone find such a one? You say, I feel a constriction, something, something. But you, you witness it, no? Or are you it? Anything that arises or disappears doesn't touch the that which witnesses it. So if there's no me that you find, then what are we talking about? What are you talking about? How many are done with this play? Nobody? That's not, nobody here is done. <laughs> nobody in this room is done. Yeah. He's like, oh, we're not school children. Don't ask us to raise our hands. Upala wants to make a report. But loudly, so everyone can hear or? You want me to repeat it? Or? Let's try it. Yeah. The fact that your home is very apparent, he said. Everything is everything is normal as it, as it is. I can see Anantaji is taking us home, and everyone is home. Home and everyone, I think everybody's relaxed and you know, feel it. There's no, no doubt. No doubt. Relax, totally relax. There's no but. Totally relaxed. Totally relaxed. Totally chill. Totally chill. Chill. Yeah. 
Full niche. Nothing more to add. Nothing to add. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's go to Helen. Hello, Father. Oh, yeah. Hello. Uh, everything you say, again, I, I know in my heart, but it somehow I still feel I have to resolve something in my head, and I know that can't be. And I've had some terrible nightmares, very, very, um, just horrible, horrible, horrible nightmares. And it seems to continue through the day. And I'm, and I know it's all mind, but there's nothing I control. You, you know, the dreams I can't control. So you, you, you've said. You've said, which sort of it hit me like a bit of a, a train, really. It said, don't suffer on behalf of what's not real. Yeah. And that that sort of, I know I am suffering on behalf of this imagined self. I, it has to be like that. It yeah. has to be like that. So my question is, I, I always thought there was something about self and the the default self and will. There can't be any. There can't be any self will in that respect. But you've gone on to say that you, as consciousness, have the full power to stop it. <laughs> is that is that true? Yeah. I thought we, we had no will. Yeah. yeah. So, so will to the non-existent one doesn't apply. No. Will to the non-existent one doesn't apply. But as long as we believe that something is happening, you see, as long as we believe, okay, let's go slowly on this. This is a very important point. So, is this a doing or is it a happening? It's a happening. This is a happening. No? A so happening. Can there be a happening which is not in time? Can there be a, can there be a happening which is not in time? No. Okay. okay, let me break it down so that everyone can be with us in this conversation. It's a beautiful introspection, I feel. Most will feel like there is an Ananta who is doing this. No? But I can confirm to you that there is no Ananta that is doing this. So because there is no agent and there is no volition at play in that way, then you can say that this is a happening. You see? Then we can observe the nature of happenings in this world. And they seem to have a beautiful intelligence which seem to be guiding them, driving them. You see? Now, that intelligence is what we call the will of God, the will of consciousness. You see? In the light of consciousness, everything seems to play out. And if you were to make some story about it, we can pretty much say, hey, this is 
quite intricate it's quite beautiful look at the way things happen you see so as long as we believe that there is a happening there seems to be an intelligence which is guiding those happenings and that intelligence is what we call the will of consciousness now that is not the ultimate truth you see because even the notion of time is just a notion yeah. yeah actually there is no time there is not even happening so even saying that everything happens by the will of consciousness or everything is even saying guru kripa kavalam everything is the master's grace is provisional as long as there is belief in time you see as long as the belief in time exists then this is the antidote to fear which tells you that everything is the will of consciousness implying everything is driven by the supreme intelligence and we have nothing to worry you see master's grace is taking care of everything but even this statement although very beautiful is provisional ultimately because ultimately we are all going to say from our heart that nothing has ever happened yes nothing has ever happened you see so if nothing has ever happened the question of agency evolution will falls away yes so as long as you are a believer in time you are a believer in something happening you see you can trust that you as consciousness have full power especially over your belief especially over the ability to identify or not of course full power over everything but i'm specially calling out belief and identification because it is at this point where all of you start to say but oh belief just happens on its own i can't help it is it so if you can't help it are you talking as you as a non existent person or you as consciousness is it and as consciousness this is completely in service to you the power of belief the power of attention all the powers in this universe are completely running by your will is it then what happens is that that as you let go of this narrative all narratives then even belief in the narrative of time on the notion of time will drop and then the notion of will also does not apply because will implies time causation without time there cannot be any causation ultimately nothing is ever really happen is it but as long as we believe that things are happening and especially when we believe things are happening to me is it i am giving you to the power of not taking yourself to be the limited non existent one but taking yourself to be that which is consciousness itself is it you are beyond consciousness in your ultimate reality but as it's to take yourself to be consciousness is better than taking yourself to be the non existent person right right so the mind that appears and it's in its seemingly attractive notions are not stronger than the light in which it appears is it the light of consciousness is the projective light and the screen on which all things appear including the mind so i am just shaking the meekishness meekishness and the sheepishness out of all of us which is just made up because we hang on to this position of the non doer you see like a personal non doer very strongly which is just not true you see because what we are then trying to say is that i can't help it because my mind is stronger than my being and that can never be and if mind was stronger than being then all of us should bow our head down to the mind because the mind then is the ultimate god not consciousness see so you say i am all of us say i am i am and then we add all kinds of stories to that but the i am part we can all say very naturally so this this is we whose being is it i am my being you see in my being my mind arises in my being my world arises in my being my relationships arise in my being my body arises in my being mm-hmm. is the creator it is being itself so how can this being be held hostage to the mind you see 
So my intention of saying that you as consciousness have full power is this. I think the mind cannot be stronger than you. Stop being so submissive and so meek because it is not a true position. It is just part of the mental narrative about who you are. And maybe it is Advaita has added something to that or some sort of new Advaita has added something to that with the notion of the uh, thing saying, I am not the doer. And we choose to not become the doer, especially when we ask to inquire or surrender. <laughs> oh, that you have to do, Ananta, you have to do, Father. No? But the rest we feel we are doing and the world is doing to us. All our resentments, our prides, our guilt are all based on doing. But when we ask to let go, then I'm not the doer. Then I choose not to be the doer. <laughs> you see? So it's a very yeah. convenient escapism which I'm not going to let anyone of you fall for as long as you keep coming to satsang. I'll keep driving these points home. See? So Yes, that, that, that is my question, yes. Yes, because I'm saying, well, if I'm not the doer, then yeah. that, that could happen on its own yeah. and I have to work towards it. So that notion will still be there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then it's only when I hear you speak, no, I keep pulling back to say, no, I'm here now. It, there's no narrative. Yes. There's, there's only this that's not happening. Um, and the, but, but, buy into the idea that I'm not the doer. I want to ask all those who buy into this idea, you who is not the doer? Who, who is that you which is not the doer? Can we find such a one? It doesn't exist, you see. So to say that the non-existent one is not the doer is, is goes without saying. It is obvious, it is obvious the non-existent one cannot be the doer. Because the one that cannot exist or doesn't exist, how can it do? But you, the existent one, I am existence itself. If there is doing, then who can doing belong to? You may say that there is no doing, there is only happening. See, you may say there is only doing, there is only there is no doing, there is only happening provisionally. And then you will recognize that even happening is just a made up notion in time. But as long as you believe in doing, God is doing this to me. See, that kind of thing at best can be the doorway into surrender, but cannot be a final surrender. No. So, so just all of this meekness, meanness, which is which takes on a very convenient non-doership when asked to let go of the faults, you see, and yet takes on doership to seem very true for the rest of the time. That is that is a facade that I'm very happy to chop. So nice to see you. So nice. And you. It all has to go. I have to, well, don't have to. It has to go. It has to go. So I'm so, so happy I've heard what you say. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Good to see you. It was very nice having you here in Bangalore as well. But this is nice too. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Madalena. Hello, Father. Um, I'm too blessed to be stressed, so I don't have anything to comment. Very, very. <laughs> Just grateful here. Um, Colleen raised his hand and. Colin. <laughs> I feel a bit sick. Um, I am not sure. I have um, a continuation. A question? No, I'm so bored of me. Uh, we just have some satsang where we are going in the house <laughs> this week. <laughs> <laughs> Some events which are squeezing. 
I, I think we are purifying some <laughs> ego here in a different way. I agree, I see. <laughs> and Colin, uh, Colin has his own way of doing that. <laughs> so he's feeling a bit sick. And I think in his own words, initially, he wanted to ask for your darshan. Yeah. Yes. That being, that presence in your heart, which is always there. Mm -hmm. At your very presence. That is the master's true darshan. Oh, it's always with you, too. always with you. You're never abandoned. You're never abandoned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All my love, all my love to all of you. Thank you. Oh. This was a beautiful darshan to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yes, Anna, you want to say hello? Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> you waving at me today. Mm. <laughs> she was eating, but she came from the table too, and she was just making sounds here next to the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's reminding me to stand up and dance again. <laughs> Look, I have to share this. She really wanted to dance in just before satsang. Mm. We were listening to the song. Um, and okay. our interpretation of the song was God is sitting in this body. It's a song which says, <laughs> I got this feeling in my body. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you all. Thank you so much. We love you all. Okay, let's go to Satyam. Hello, Anantaji. Oh, my dear. Priya is here. So nice. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Very good. Hello, Anantaji. Hello, sir. How are you? Very good, very good. It's really been a long time. Yes, yes. That day, and uh, yes, it it feels uh, it feels very nice. I feel good, and I I was uh, I was avoiding, of course, I was avoiding satsang because of many reasons. But yes. I'm but I'm not escaping. But so, Monty, Satyam pushes me, which is a very good push. I need it. Anantaji, I'm breaking the rules sometimes uh, to push people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> G gently encourage is fine. <laughs> uh, yes, okay, yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. yes. I don't, I don't know where to start. <laughs> already, already, this seems like a different Priya from the one who spoke last time. So this is already very good. Yes, yes, that is, that is true. But so I will, I will, I will come on the point. I will be on the point. I don't meditate. But I try sometimes. It is always with me and I understand very well. But uh, there is no discipline. Yeah. And uh, college is going good, sometimes not good. All the problems are there, but there's one. Yeah. I have an alcohol problem, right. drinking problem. So this is not every day. This episode comes every three weeks, every two weeks. 
for two three weeks i am fine but right. all of a sudden something comes in me and uh, i am not drinking alcohol the alcohol is drinking me mm. and it goes to to the extent where i'm blacked out people around me are in trouble yes all my darkness and cry and the suicidal thoughts and i want to die and i hurt myself and, and my family is crying everybody is worried i am going to neighbors which i don't remember next day what yeah. happened so it is not a illness but it can be a illness if i don't take care of it right now i know i am perfectly fine but there is something that i i don't know why this is happening because i know this is not good for me i know this is not good for anyone and if i really wanted to become a alcoholic i think i would have already chosen i wouldn't why is this happening every 3 weeks or you know times 2 weeks not every day and loneliness craving satyam pointed out there's always I, that i am nothing is enough for me i think i agree with that nothing is there's always some some problem i'm finding very very good it's very good to spot that so let me say some things about this part especially because this may be at the root of it so when we say that nothing is enough for us no or nothing is enough for me basically what is happening is that our mind has got us by the throat and it is saying that you as you are are not enough you see so it's not really about what you have in the sense in the world when we talk about it and say okay i have this relationship i have this money i have a healthy body i'm spiritual all this should be enough for me you see because these things are there but actually the mind is just an attack on our own being and its constant message is that your being is not enough you see you yourself are not enough for yourself you need something like there's a sense of lack which it creates which you feel like you need to fill up with something and i am actually very encouraged to hear that this this kind of thing only happens once in 2 3 weeks of course it's very painful for those who are around you but uh, actually what happened in this life and i have rarely shared to these stories but but i never wanted to touch alcohol ever because i had a alcoholic uncle who made life miserable for the whole family and as a child growing up i could see what kind of effect it had on the family so i felt like anything that can do this to us is not worth having so as a child i never had an attraction towards alcohol because i saw what it can do but his situation was that he could not live a minute without it you know he could he would have to wake up in the morning and then uh, immediately find a way to uh, get to the alcohol and then uh, get the high or whatever they call it you see so i'm encouraged already to hear that actually you're sober for 3 weeks you see which means that it's not um, uh, an addiction of sorts but what is happening is that uh, the mind gets you from time to time and convinces you of your of your lack that you are not enough and you feel like you need to fill it up with something you see you need to fill it up with something and you can fill it up with this kind of substance which which may seem to give you a sense of um uh, uh momentary or provisional completeness uh, which may last a moment or two but then i'm sure you also see the impact of it not being uh, really graceful or helpful in any way so so i want to tell you that that the most most strong addiction no matter what we say is an addiction to our thoughts is an addiction to our mind and there have been many cases of people who have had these problems with drugs alcohol other substances who have come to satsang and they have got rid of the addiction to their head you see let go of the addiction to their thoughts and with that the other addictions have also fallen away so this is what i want to introduce you to that actually 
it is the mind which which is the highest addiction or the or the lowest addiction in the human condition and that is the one that gets us and without that one in your case especially because it doesn't seem to be uh, like a physical addiction it seems to be after something is swallowed from the mind that you get into that kind of uh, phase that these things happen so uh, you started by saying that i'm not disciplined i don't meditate but when you do when you notice that you do meditate then are things better do you not feel the urge to drink so much then which satyam was helping me to uh, meditate uh, then i started practicing 5 minutes 2 minutes by myself and uh, at that moment uh it is there all the feelings are there but but i can see it that's there it's not overpowering and uh, in between this one month two months i all i'm also going through a breakup it's a very short breakup thank god it was just 5 6 months Uh, the loneliness i think i have made this thing so strong in me that i am not enough alone i am incomplete i need someone i need this majnu i need the romeo in my life otherwise it's everything is boring and then i think the alcohol plays the part there and then even if i find someone then i start finding fault in that person also so the alcohol has become like a boyfriend yes yeah. but i don't know ananta ji because <laughs> it's difficult for me to be in it not to to be there yes i get like this it's just i need for the instant magic yes i'm i'm the king of instant i love instant stuff even i don't have long attention span i was the most undisciplined spiritual seeker i would say like your report sounded much like mine would have sounded where no meditation consistently jumping from practice to practice trying different things you see not not being a, by any standards a good spiritual seeker is not something that i was but what i discovered is that taking myself to be actually doesn't exist you know and you will also come to that point you will also come to that point where this one which says i am like this i am like that i don't like this i need this and all of that who are you talking about are you talking about the body it is part of me everything is part of me who is this me that everything is part of who is this me what does it look like the loneliness you are asking about everything all this so who suffers from the loneliness who is that one i am lonely yes, yes but i but but i can also see that i am i i am saying this i am lonely but yes. i can, yes i can see also that i am saying this it is it's okay it's okay we're doing very well very well 
because I see that there's at least a little openness towards these questions. Initially, otherwise it can feel like you know, this kind of stuff. So at least that is not happening. So this itself is a very good start. So as long as that sliver of openness is there, the room for self-discovery is very, very, very large. You see, it's very much a possibility. But if you're convinced and you're not willing to look at all, you see, then I may have offered you a mantra or something like that, you know, because at least to keep something stable. But it seems like Satyam is saying, yes, 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 ask him, ask him. Oh, we'll <laughs> Somebody actually. Okay. So, uh, so what we're saying is that it seems like there is some room for this exploration. And let's see how it goes. Let's see where we can go from here. So you say that I suffer from this loneliness. Without denying the loneliness, the feeling may appear. See, any feeling of constriction may appear. But who is the one that suffers from this? Can you produce that one? Not produce that. Okay, what is your experience of that one? Where is that one? It is there somewhere. There is a heaviness in the heart. Uh, biologically, um, you know, something feels blocked here. Something I can also feel that blockness. Yes. So what you are basically saying is that, like a child says, no? that if there is no monster in the cupboard, then why am I feeling scared? Because there is a sense of fear, there is a blockness there, therefore there must be a me. Are we willing to live with that presumed me? Just a presumed monster in the cupboard. Because there are these byproducts, circumstantial evidence. You see, there is fear, there is anger, there is loneliness, there is guilt. All of these things are there. Therefore, there must be a me. You see? What if we try to meet the me directly without these byproducts? Who is at the center of all of this? It is not the body. Because the body is not missing the relationship. The body is just sitting. Is it? The body is just here. It is fine. It's comfortable on a chair. So the body is not saying, I am this way, I am that way. I am good, I am bad. Body is just a body, a bundle of flesh. And all these attributes of good, bad, uh, struggling, happy, all of this belong to who? Their habits. I I can I can see their habits, and then because we are following a certain lifestyle from beginning to now, we don't have. So we identify. Yes, yes, very good, very good. I want to ask you something about that. The one that sees, the one that is seeing, you see, does that have any problem? I don't know is good. I don't know is good. It's worth exploring. And I can tell you it does not have any problem. See, it is your beingness itself which is perceiving. And your being by itself that never has a problem. It is the made up entity called the ego, the, ident the identified, the one in the story, the protagonist of the story, which seems to have all of this. But that one, the good news is that that one doesn't exist. You see? Now, the mind does not like hearing that because the mind has built up all the constructs on the basis of the existence of that one. 
Now suddenly you come to satsang and this guy is telling you oh, that one doesn't exist. The mind will hate that and want to attack me with all its might. <laughs> if not now, then later. But um, that's how it is. You cannot find the one, you see, who is lonely. You can find the one that is perceiving, you see. But you don't find even either one as an entity of sorts. Now this one that is perceiving, can that be perceived? Can the perceiver be perceived? I don't know that. At the moment, I can just, I can feel that there is, there is a watchfulness. Very good. Very good. So, do you feel like this is an important question? Because suppose you spend your whole life solving problems of this me you know, and going through all the stories of this me and the ups and downs of this me. And at the end, you realize that there is no such me. Won't that be a waste? A whole life you thought you were a frog, but at the end of the life you realize there is no frog. <laughs> you were just trying to find mosquitoes all your life to eat. That would have been a waste. No? Is so, isn't it worth discovering that who is the one that I really am? Does that one really have a problem or am I solving non-existent ones? Could it be that maybe I'm not interested in, in, in knowing who is this, you know, maybe I, I want to become the madness completely. It could be, it could be, but something brings you to satsang, whether it is satyam or whether it is, see, those who are not interested, then they find no reason to come to satsang. So, although it may, may seem like, oh, it, I'm here because I'm suffering from loneliness or I'm here because I have this addiction to some substance, you see. But my feeling is that anyone who comes to satsang, there's a sliver of openness for this discovery in them. Although uh, the mind may, may paint it to seem as if it is too hard or difficult or are you really interested in this? You see, these kind of questions may come, you see, but something keeps bringing you back. And I feel like uh, that itself is a sign that there is something there. Now that you're here, you see, but now that you're here, just inquire, isn't it worthwhile to check? You see? Suppose you spend your whole life representing somebody who never existed. Are you willing to sacrifice your whole life to that one? You see, everybody lives in a way that they presume that I am this body man. Everybody presumes I am this body-mind and wants to live their life, you see. And yet, the ones who are truly <coughs> happy in the world are the ones we call sages who have come to self-discovery. So what are these ones who are coming to happiness and contentment, who have come to a self-discovery, but the rest of the world seems to be running on a treadmill of suffering, you see. So, so something in you has suffered enough from all of these things, from relationships, from these uh, um, uh, physical things, that something is opening up to discover a higher truth about yourself. Because you're looking for some contentment, some peace, you see, because you've been up and down too much on this roller coaster now. You see, how this turns out, nobody can predict. But I want to use every opportunity to make sure that you find what uh, all of these ones who have achieved contentment are finding. So, so if Bhagwan Ramana Maharishi got it, if Guruji got it, if Papaji got it, then why not you? you see? So what are they saying that got them to this peace, to this contentment? They are saying we must find out who we really are. They, we must find out who we really are. Because as long as we taking, we keep taking the narrative from the mind that I am this body, till then this suffering never ends. 
then I ask you, okay, can you look and find the one that is suffering? You say, I don't know. That I don't know is very good. No? That I don't know is at least a huge leap from the idea that I know it is me that is suffering. Me only. What do you mean by that question? You see, at least you are able to look and see who is this one. Is it the baby that was born to the mother? That baby, every cell in its body has changed now. Is it the one that is going to die on the deathbed? That one will, all the body will be fully different from this one. So who is this one that is here now? And till, till we don't know, how can we say this is happening to me or this is not happening to me? Who is that one to which it is happening or not happening? See? Now I'll give you some tips which will help you in this um, thing because otherwise it can seem impossible. See? So what I notice you do is that when a question is asked, you go to that which we call the mind see, for the answer. Because maybe you feel like you're on the spot or something or you need to have an answer. So you go to that aspect of our being which we call the mind. Now from the mind you cannot answer this question, who am I? You see, the answer is not available there. You may have an answer in your mind which will say, Oh, my Atma, hu, I am the soul, I am this. You see, all these answers we may have read in spirituality, but they are not helping you. So forget about them. They are pointless. You see? Don't worry about any of that. That will not help you. You see? So let me guide you, and you don't go to your mind. You stay with the innocence of a child and see what happens. You see? Can you try and stop existing right now? Stop being in this moment. Can you do it? Don't be. Don't exist. Tell me when you're done. When you don't exist, tell me. Can't do it, no? That's not possible. Not possible. Not possible. So this being is who is being which you can see not not turn off, not turn off. Yeah. Suddenly the ghanties are bajoing. <laughs> so this being, which is not stoppable, is here. No, it's apparent. It's apparent. Now that being is consciousness. That being is God. That being is Atma, Paramatma, whatever you want to call it. Now, is there a lack in that? Is there something missing in that? Is that being lonely? Being lonely? Just look, don't think. Just look, Just look. don't think. Just look. You don't have to have an answer. You don't have to have an answer. Can't hear you anymore, my dear. The loneliness is there. I can, I can see. I can see the 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 feelings are also there. Yes, yes. Uh, the fear is there. Oh my God! Oh my God! Weeks. Then what yes, yes. I do? No, right now it is going so nice. I can feel that I am here. But after three weeks, I don't know what yes. will happen. And then every, everybody will be against me. And then yes. right now. Right now, everything is fine. Yes. 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 So, enjoy, firstly, enjoy the fineness of right now rather than worrying about what tomorrow will bring. Otherwise, what's the point of everything being fine right now? Otherwise, what's the point? 
it's like saying we are right there's an echo coming back it's like saying about that but it's all right um, uh, yeah yeah Can you hear me? Yes, this is fine, and no echo is coming. Okay, so let's keep it like this. However, oh, this is now. Yes. Are you so, are you hear, hear me? I can hear you well, my dear. This is fine. You can keep it like this for now. So, so I'm saying that if breakfast is good, don't think about lunch right now. Enjoy the breakfast, which is good. So, if everything is fine right now, enjoy the enjoy enjoy the breakfast. Now, I was asking you whether. this being the you said the feeling of fear is there i'm not denying that fear may be there now the being is suffering from this fear is your being suffering from it who is the fearful one the fear is there but introduce me to the one that is the fearful one There is something suffering, but it's not the being. It's, it's is the one that witnesses that something you, or is that something you? The witnessing is me. The witnessing is you, and is that witnessing fearful or lonely? Oh, I can see the loneliness. Yes. Like a, yes. 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 Like a big uh, rock. Yes. Like very good. Rock. Very good. So, in the play of the waking state, in the play of the human condition, all these qualities and attributes are experience. You see, they come and they go. Nothing comes and stays forever. You see, nothing comes and stays forever. So, allow these to come and go. Allow these to come and go, and notice that you are the witnessing of them. you are not something that is suffering from them the sufferer is a made up entity it is just your mental narrative and your mind is oppressing you in this way you see but that story belongs to nobody actually the story actually belongs to nobody because you are the pure witnessing of all of this coming and going so when i say remain open and empty it is not a practice it is not a meditation you don't have to be disciplined to do it just allow everything to come and go without making a practice out of it just make it your natural habit <laughs> a natural habit because actually naturally you are like this only everybody right now is like this only nobody is holding on naturally it is just something we learned how to do so whatever is being perceived allow it to be there whatever thoughts are coming allow them to come and go and notice that you are the witnessing of it not that which comes and goes like this you will notice that the addiction to thinking will stop and as the addiction to thinking stops then all addiction all other addictions will fall away you won't even remember you had them you will be like what <laughs> i had this yes, Now, i will be, i will be very aware in these two three weeks because it's really too much now very good very good sometimes life has to squeeze us to this point that we become open to change not only i think i am myself helpless with this yes that's what guru ji says that when we run out of moves when we run out of moves that is when the truth becomes very apparent to us so without satyam us forcing even when the mind will say but it's very boring i'm not ready i want to go and do something else see if you can come to satsang often You see, because satsang opens up something in you, but your mind will hate that. So I'm already telling you in advance that it is going to resist 
it is going to say no no next week no no i'll come to bangalore one day it will say all of these things but you try to come you show up the good the good i am making a little change i yeah. am uh, shifting to rishikesh from dehradun so i can be near my family i can be near uh, uh, ganga and uh, there are a lot of uh, tourists and yoga classes so yeah. where i am staying is very isolated i have no one to talk to yeah. and uh, it's just not comfortable to stay so i am trying to make this change rik i hope i am really really hoping this change will uh bring settlement with yeah. my things yes. and uh, then it will be also i i will also get my computer uh, check then i can come for such some small and i will Very good. I'm sending you all my love, all my blessings. This sounds very good. Rishikesh Ganga Ji will take care of you, and whenever you and Satyam have the chance, and his mother also, if she's feeling well enough, you're all welcome to come to Bangalore for a visit if you like. Whenever Grace makes it possible. But in the meanwhile, full, full love, full blessings to all of you. Thank you, Anand. I, Anand, yeah, I just have uh, just few words. Uh, thank, first of all, thank you from. um all my heart and the core of every cell of my being and uh, and uh, just uh, a request that you know uh, i keep you in my heart always and you you remember me forever for truly what <laughs> this is yeah you know yeah. when i stand before all the masters then that is only my prayer that keep an eye over me because i might forget sometimes this one but please keep it <laughs> it's a weird respect voice but this is all because i know that you know all what has happened uh, the greatest uh, things which have happened in my life they were they were not my doings they were some grace came and so that's why i i know this that that this as you write guru grace kevalam and this is always so there's just that prayer <laughs> very good very good Full love, full blessings, always with you, always with you. Okay, let's go to Sylvia. Namaste, Father. My dear. Thank you. Welcome. welcome. Uh, I felt to come in front of you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly for what, but. Uh, something inside it's it's like pushing i don't know i feel an intensity to come and when you ask if you are ready to be done with this yeah i felt yes yes very <laughs> uh, very powerful yes very good yes and yes. is there any message from the mind any narrative which you still think has a lot of truth in it yes in in last days uh, something came very strongly and uh, uh regarding um, practical uh, things yeah. like and and uh, like uh, some some worry 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 and fear about future yeah this and uh, i i saw that i like in that moment i can observe the play but still is like a powerful identification with this yeah yes so uh, the minute we make the category of practical and sometimes of course we use the word in satsang also but the instant we make the category of practical i have seen many of you feel like that becomes out of the scope of god mm-hmm. or out of the scope of satsang to take care of that mm-hmm. so then we we become open to worry because this is about practical life now god can't take care of practical life you see but god is taking care of life the entirety of life 
and these categories don't exist you see who is making your heart beat in satsang the same one is making your heart beat in so called practical life you see the one that is making the breath flow all of this functions happen all of that god is only doing so if they stopped in so called practical life and it was up to the mind then the body would be dead in one instant there would be no practical life the second thing is that uh one when we say in my practical life is it an invitation to believe in our separation in our identity again and therefore then because i am back to being little old me then i can worry i can be um, uh, wondering about the future you see so then does it cease to become god's life because it is a practical aspect of life who's job is to run practical life it's clearly not not me like in in a personal way it's it's yeah. god the self but when when the worry appears or strong emotion appears um i see that it's a mental knowing that oh god is running this yeah. but it's not in my heart because i still go with no idea let's, <laughs> let's clarify this let's make sure this is true okay the me is a mental knowing god is not a mental knowing at all points there is no me in existence existence is god consciousness is god just naturally you see so the notion of me is a conceptual knowing right now if you don't know anything mentally there is no me see then in in the job world or whenever you say the practical world you see is there a me there and god is just a con- conceptual con- construction no 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 i i saw that it's it's the other way around exactly god is it's the presence yeah. and this the addiction of have i only lost oh is it the connection here everyone else can hear me well yes uh my uh do you hear me now not yet my dear maybe we give it a minute or two we, we can't see you also did you turn the video off Uh, so it's my internet ah no problem we can hear you well now thank you good 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 so yes. does your being change between satsang world and practical world does your being change no now the worry is for whom mm. it it is worry or feelings or something and ideas yes and uh, it seems like it's coming back to an entity which But is in front yes. <laughs> i'll i'll remind everyone of this the false or the illusion or maya is designed to seem like and feel like and if we keep saying that just because something seems like truth it must be true then we will keep following for maya no? you see so just because something seems like it is going to an entity does it mean like that there is an entity have you verified that mm. 
no it's there is no entity there is no like uh, no person no yes but, but <laughs> i i think of this a lot and no stop that Okay. <laughs> is it you don't have to think of it at all not a lot a lot is too much you know you don't even think about it a little bit is it you think <laughs> about it and wait about it you be with your intuition about it is it the place of knowing the truth is your heart the place of falseness is thinking the place of limited constructs is thinking don't try to come to the master knowledge in your head you see the true knowledge will not be available because you think of something a lot you, you may think and think and think for many lifetimes but the truth will never be a product of your thinking become headless my dear headless then no category of practical and such on no category like that life is just life and and then this fear appears like i'm like it it's still an ego who is afraid to for like it's too free this life is too free yeah or uh, anything can happen yeah. and uh, yes but i cannot the, predict who is the experiencer of that anything happening okay i'm going to share a few words about this and this may bring some um uh, rest rest in your condition because you look a bit tired from all this um, contemplation maybe co co conceptual thinking so so we feel like surrender means that i will leave everything to god is it therefore then god we say you are the doer but i yet remain the experiencer is it so when i worry about my future experience then i say my surrender is not full because <laughs> i still feel like god may not take care of me good enough but this is still half surrender full surrender is to surrender the doer and the experiencer see now if you surrender both the doing and the experiencing then tell me how you can worry because anything may happen but who will experience that anything will you as a person experience it is there a person there to experience anything so we are worrying on whose behalf for whom are we worrying say let's hear I feel in that moment it's not worth mentioning that one. In this moment, it's not worth mentioning because it doesn't exist, no. Or yes. Or does it exist, and you don't want to talk about it? <laughs> Those are two different things. Uh, like there is an expression of ego. or separateness there is like no this of ego all is an expression of your being is it it is the subtitles in the story which tell us that there is a ego there is a separate one this is an expression of that separate one you see this is just a narrative in the subtitles in the head whose expression is this right now can the non existent one express what is the dog next to you saying now what is the dog next to you saying it's not real ah uh, but what is it saying dog. it's not real but what is it say? what is its expression 
you see if you were not being polite you would have said father what is this i mean there's no dog how can it express in the same way there is no ego there is no person how can it express is it if you mean that consciousness is buying into the narrative of the mind and in the in that buying into that story what is coming out are you calling that an expression of the ego yes Like you were to believe that there is a dog actually, and it wants food, and you say, "I want food," like that. Is that what you mean? Okay, then yes. stop it. Stop it. What stops you from stopping that? Mm, a kind of addiction. Stop the addiction. Drop it. You as consciousness can drop it. Easy. What to do to drop it? You know the answer. Um, uh, it's not an action. Yeah, it is just an emptiness. It's just an openness. Just an emptiness. Hmm. you have to let the next thought come and go whatever the thought is let it come and let it go you can do it full power thank you don't ever buy into the idea that the mind tells you that you can't do it is it you can't do this of course you can the thought can come and the thought can go you can allow it to go nothing can take this power away from you This is what I mean by open and empty. This is what I mean by headless. Yes, me. Me. Whatever needs to be done here. Yes. Like yes. I see more and more. It's not about what this mind is thinking or. Yes. If your grace and your, I don't know, wants to 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 fully fully take this this. Very good, very good. So don't think about it. Yes, <laughs> you're just troubling yourself. Just troubling yourself. Don't worry, everything is fine. Don't have to worry about anything. Thank you. Thank you. The divine grace. As long as you believe that something is happening, I have given you the reassurance that everything is the master's grace. You don't have to worry. Uh, I feel to say. Yeah. that you mentioned about the happening yeah. uh sometimes like what you say from the true point it's like not not just clear but about like i can say yes it's not happening yeah and uh, it's like lately it's changing very fast from this point like it's it's still mind but i and I, in in the next moment it's it seems like oh i'm doing everything everything is happening in, and it's very aggressive and, and just want to put this at your feet this uh i don't know ignorance arrogance aggressiveness all all this 
is uh, one one solution to all of this just give me your head don't take your head back after this conversation just give it to me and even if it feels like it's on top of your shoulders let it be my problem you see so all of its problems and anxieties and ignorance and arrogance all all is my problem although it may seem to be sitting on your shoulders it's still mine okay please take it and thank you thank you thank you okay for for your presence and for your love for us and for every such song and thank you Let's go to Devi. <coughs> Hello. Yeah. Thank you. I really felt I need to speak to you. Yes, very good. Now it's not so clear what I want to say anymore, but uh, just to show up and. Um, It's very good like this because it's, actually it's never clear to me what I'm going to say next. I have no idea. It just shows up and it's fine. Even if it's not fine, it's fine. And it's good because before I really felt I need to know what what I need to say, and I was rehearsing, and now it's okay. Somehow I I feel like I see many little good things, like more more. I can see more the the mind, like I can recognize, but there still feels like a lot of effort many times. Yeah. Like I'm just telling myself all the time, don't listen, don't listen. It's not true. I'm not this. I'm, I'm much bigger than this. But it feels like a, like an effort, you know. And sometimes it feels like I really have to do this effort because I'm I'm enough of this negativity. Very good. But sometimes it feels like also this prayer. If it could just fall away. by grace would be so good because sometimes it's so much effort and i don't know i'm not sure when i'm doing too much or <laughs> now the thing is that it may seem like effort but actually it is the letting go of effort right so it may seem like effort but the letting go of the mind because it is talking nonsense <laughs> and it's talking untruth about me about my reality is actually not effort it is the withdrawal of effort the effort has been to give it attention yes yes what uh, yeah yeah you see that is that is effort to pick up and to believe you see and yet because in a way it has been a habit that we have been making that effort then to come to effortlessness seems like that is taking some effort now that effort is fully worthwhile as long as it feels like effort it is fully worthwhile because it is not true that it is effort you see if it was true that it was effort then you could be tired from it but this is just the mind complaining because it's like can get a bit tired <laughs> yeah, because it's... you know how it feels it feels like being like in a swamp you know of negativity and i just feel like i have to stand up i have to rise up and <laughs> like the is... thoughts are pulling me down and i just need to But maybe, maybe it the mind is selling imagine. you this narrative it is not true okay. <laughs> okay it is selling you this story that this is what is happening to you let's do it together okay tell me how you have to make it for it let the mind come and go what is the effort you have to make
Then it feels like effort just raise your hand. See, already so good. <laughs> so good. But it doesn't feel like this always. Like <laughs> some, when I'm just moving, it feels like. Also, when I listen to you, I feel there is like, like an energy in me, like very dense and strong, and like the, the the fight of the mind, you know. Like, and I I have to make an effort to listen to you, and sometimes, yeah, I feel. Something is is coming in, but not not like I just f- wish I could hear you, you know, like really to feel what you're saying, like to experience it. And it just sometimes it feels like still a process, and it's like frustrating. And yes, don't force yourself for that. I hear this report very often that I can't hear you today. I can't hear you. you know? Many people say like that because the mind is very active, or too much is happening at the emotional layer. Something. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just keep showing up. Just keep showing up. It's fine. I feel like I have to say this. Like it feels like like this energy, like this density. Yeah. It, it's like it's like when I'm looking in a right way, it's like dissolving. But it's it's like also in a way, it's in the way of listening. I don't know. It just feels like this. I, I have some me. some advice yeah. for you. Homework for you. Some more homework for you, which yeah. is that. <laughs> For one week till we meet next time, you will not have any idea of what is right and what is wrong. Like what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong. Forget about it. You see, so I have to listen more. I have to listen less. This is good for me. This is bad for me. All this forget about. It. Is it okay? Like. Many times I'm just in satsang and I feel I'm just here. I can't understand anything. Not really yeah. understand, but like to feel that it's 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 resonating. Yes, it's completely. It's okay to just yeah. be there. Yeah. When I want to shake you up and get your attention, then I will start speaking loudly and <laughs> make some gestures or make some story. It's okay. Leave it to me. It's not your problem. It's all okay. But I have to also ask, please, like, I'm praying all the time, like, please just make things easier because it's really, really tough sometimes, like. Yeah. For whom? I, like, tough for whom? For... Who is it tough for? No, I hear your prayer, of course, and it's in my heart. But, but really, when my children get into a narrative of the non-existent one, I have to point it out. Who is it up for, my dear? I don't know. Find the sufferer. Find the sufferer, and I will fix it suffering. Can we find the suffering? I don't know how to, I don't know. Like I tried to look even before when you spoke to somebody else and you said, look, who is suffering? Yeah. I try to look and there's like this dense energy inside me. And I don't. Trying is going too far. Trying is going too far. Yeah. Then I don't know. Right. Don't try at all. 
because trying is grasping grasping is suffering so i don't want you to try you say without trying you can say it's quite tough for me so who's being represented in that without trying who is report is that it seems quite effortless so oh, it's been so tough for me so in that effortless report on the me who is the me that you were talking about okay now effortlessly who is here now you're here no without any effort you're here or no yes but i feel i'm not true <laughs> i feel the me the, the me the false one doesn't exist my dear it's just an idea you are here right now or no yes so this one that is here cannot be the false one it is your being itself you are aware of your existence instantly it's no effort no effort you are aware of your existence no? that's why you say i am here <laughs> no you're not aware let me see the one who's unaware let me see you're not aware that you are here ha huh? who is it then <laughs> why is it <laughs> huh? why does it seem difficult i'm just asking simple question okay you are aware of this hand Yes. Yes. That's it. That you is the truth. Can't go anywhere. That you is the truth. That's it. I know the mind will say then what is the big deal <laughs> all of this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying it's hidden in plain sight. The unchanging reality of the pure self is the one that is aware of the perception of this hand. it is you do you have to work hard to be aware of the perception no but there is something else you know like there's not there's like a distortion here i can't explain like something doesn't feel right is the same one that's why i said forget about right and wrong is the same one aware of even that distortion or is there a different one that is aware of the hand and the distortion hmm? a different one is aware of that distortion is it the hand you are aware of i don't know like it must be me no <laughs> i should be aware but it's not like a i don't know don't whatever you I don't i just feel like some something needs to be cleaned and dissolved like a lot of mental you know like this in me like in my head and everywhere and i can't do it like it is just nothing needs to happen <laughs> you're seeing the hand clearly no you're seeing the hand when yes. it's clean that's it you are seeing it no you yes. that you is your reality what clean up needs to happen for it to be you it's just you naturally <laughs> are you all with me on this you may feel like oh this is happening this has to go this has to become better this has to become right you see this is bad but you are aware of your perceptions you are aware of your perceptions you as awareness are aware see it is the truth of who you are it you can't shake it anything can come from the mind you say distortion the whole world may explode but you that cannot change for you because you will be aware of the perception of the explosion everything you attach to may go to bits but you will still be there to witness it that you you already know <laughs> the you knows itself so all the fixing is just made up
the one that is aware of the hand what needs to be fixed for that one does it apply all these notions as do they apply to that awareness don't take any position you don't have to do anything you've been working too hard that's your problem yes and i'm doing it all the time i don't know how to stop because i feel <laughs> 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 because also something feels right about it like some some effort which is good like i'm not Sure. <laughs> Forget about what I said just now. Because <laughs> I realize immediately the checker guy gets that. The checker guy. Which one? The, the one checker guy, the spiritual guy, the ego, which is the checker guy, says, ah, yes, Ananta said I've been working too hard. Yes, I've been working too hard. The minute it escapes, <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> so it's okay to to make an effort then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've not been working hard at all. Just keep working hard. <laughs> Got it. one advice i'll give you and maybe it will be uh, it may sound complicated but allow all opposites to exist in your head don't be troubled by them at all you don't have to conclude which is the right way which is the wrong way forget about right and wrong good and bad the world is good the world is bad the world is up the world is down the world is jumping the world is still i am allow every opposite to be there it doesn't matter when the zebra jumps up and down at the same time it becomes a giraffe got <laughs> <laughs> it that's the highest truth <laughs> समझ गए समझ गए और मैं डाल दूं to that what can i say
play something for all of you. <clears throat> I got reminded of this uh, because of the words that just came out of this mouth. Okay, maybe I'll read this out for the ones in the room. <clears throat> A particularly inti- intriguing category of Kabir's poems is the type known as Ullad Bansi. Poems in the upside down language. They intrigue because they are absurd, paradoxical, crazy, impenetrable, and yet they point to be meaningful. Kabir's upside down poems are part of the long tradition in India and can be related to similar expressions across the world. See, one of the similar expressions, of course, is uh, Zen. Let's see what this one sings. He says that whoever can decipher this poem will become free. Maybe you can. Okay, I'll read it.
you 
next week will you remind me and then we we'll love to hear it thank you all so much for being in satsang today satguru shri muji baba ki jai satguru shri muji baba ki jai guru kripa ke vadan